In this lesson, we'll learn how to create this slider in Webflow with the help of Swiper.js. So we can click on our thumbs, we can also drag on either of these to move it, and this is fully controllable by scrolling left and right and up and down. So let's get started building this out. So when we have two sliders controlling each other, they need to be grouped together in a parent component div. I have my section here set to min height of 100VH and align to stretch. Inside of that, we'll have our parent component, which is going to have the class of slider gallery underscore component. This can be 100% width, and we'll apply flex for the children inside to vertical, align, stretch, and space between. Inside of this, we can have all of our sliders that make up this gallery. So the first will be our slider BG component, which is for our background image slider. It's going to be 100% within height of its parent and position absolute, so it doesn't take up any space. We'll go ahead and set the parent to position relative. And inside of this background image component, we can have a collection list with the classes of swiper, swiper wrapper, and swiper slide. These classes are completely unstyled, so we'll give them combo classes based on the parent component name. So in this case, it would be is slider BG, and we can style this to be 100% within height of its parent. And we'll go ahead and grab the wrapper and we'll give it a combo of is slider BG. And that's going to be 100% within height of its parent. And we can grab the item, give it that combo of is slider BG. And let's give that 100% within height of the parent again. And inside that, we can have an image and we'll give it the class of slider BG image. We'll go ahead and pull the image from the CMS. And let's also go ahead and set the alt text here. And let's give this 100% within height of its parent. And let's give it a fit of cover. So that's our first sort of slider here. We're gonna have another one for our titles though. And this will have a class of slider, we'll say titles component. And this is gonna be 100% within height of the available space. And inside this, we can have our collection list again. So this collection is gonna have swiper, swiper wrapper, and swiper slides. And we'll give it the class of is, we'll say slider titles. That's gonna be 100% within height of its parent. And we'll go ahead and grab the wrapper. Um, we'll say is, uh, we'll say slider titles, and that's 100% within height again. And this time we're going to apply flex uh, so that we get all the items side by side. We'll align stretch so they're full height of their parent and justify to start. We want these slides to be auto width, and by default, Swiper gives the Swiper slide class 100% width. So we're going to give it a combo of is slider titles, and we'll use that to override that set the width back to auto, so it's based on the width of the content inside it. So we'll add some text inside and pull that from our collection. We'll give it the class of uh, slider titles uh, heading, and we'll give this main component position relative so it sits on top of our background image component. We can grab the slide and apply flex to center this up. And let's also give something like 4% padding on all sides. And this is 4% of the wrapper's width. So that wraps up our second slider. We're also going to have a div inside our slider gallery component for our controls. So this bottom wrapper has a wrapper for the buttons, and these are just two link blocks. And then we also have this paragraph text here for sort of our numbers. And then inside of this bottom wrapper, we'll have our third slider. So we'll add a div in here, and this is going to have a class of slider thumbs, uh, we'll say component. And since this uh, div here has 40% width, we'll give our component 40% width also to keep our number directly in the middle. Inside of our slider thumbs component, we'll have another div and we'll give this the class of slider thumbs wrap. It's gonna be 25% the width of its parent and inside of that, we can have our collection. So the swiper gets a combo of is uh, slider thumbs and we'll use that to set it to 100% width and overflow visible so nothing gets cropped. Inside the wrapper, we'll get a combo is slider, uh, is slider thumbs also. And this is gonna be set to flex, so all the slides go side by side. Then we have the slides, they're gonna get a class of is slider thumbs, and they'll be set to 100% the width of their parent and don't shrink or grow. And then inside of that, we'll have a div for setting the aspect ratio. So this will be a slider thumbs, we'll say height. It's got a top padding using percent and position relative. Then we can finally have our image inside that and we'll pull it from our collection. We'll give it the class of slider thumbs image and that's just position absolute to cover the parent 100% within height. The slide will get some right padding of 0.5M to separate them all like so. Now, whenever we drag on the slider, the wrapper is actually going to move with a transform. 
Maybe we slide it over like this. Notice how it's covering the number now, which we don't want. So we could grab our whole component and set that to overflow hidden, but it's cropping off the right side too, and we only wanna crop off the left of this. So to fix that, what we're gonna do is drop another div inside the component, and let's give this a class of slider thumbs, we'll call it overflow, and we'll basically put the wrap in here. So we're gonna target this overflow div with a little bit of custom CSS to set a size on it. So we'll grab our overflow div, and let's go ahead and set a width, and we'll use CSS calc to make it 100% of the components width, and we'll do plus 100 viewport width. So if we save that, notice how all our slides are a lot larger, and that's because they're a percent of the overflow div, which is hanging way past the edge of the screen. So we need to fix that. So we'll drop in an empty div inside overflow, put our wrapper inside that, and then we can open up our embed again and copy all this code. So the overflow is 100% of component width plus 100 viewport width. Then we'll target the direct child, the direct div inside of this overflow, set it to 100% of the overflow div minus 100 viewport width. So that math makes this uh, div the same width as the component. So if we save that, you notice everything's fixed now. This div is exact same width as component and the overflow is the only element that's hanging out towards the right of the screen. So we can set overflow div to overflow hidden and now it only crops the left of this. I'll go ahead and remove that transform, and then we can wrap these numbers in spans and give them some utility classes for changing the text. So this will have swiper number current, and this one we can wrap in a span and give it swiper number total. In the page settings, I've included the swiper CSS file, the swiper JavaScript file, and linked up my own custom code sandbox file. So we'll start by grabbing our main component that holds all of the sliders, and we'll loop through that with a jQuery each loop right here. Then we want to set up the sliders inside of it. So we'll set up this first one, which is a swiper with a combo class of is slider bg. So we'll target that combo class here. We're going to set its slides to view for one, and its speed will change to something like 900 for now. And I'll also set keyboard true so we can control it. So if I refresh here, notice the slides sort of just slide from left and right, like so. If we head over to swiperjs.com and click on API, there's a bunch of different effects we can choose from. So I'll start with this cover flow effect. Here's some settings we can pass in for cover flow to customize it. And notice if we put this in, how the slides sort of just rotate out like so, but we can choose how we want them to animate so we can affect their rotation and also their scale. So maybe we can try not rotating them at all, but maybe scaling them down instead. So the default scale will be one. And if we refresh that, Notice how the slides going out of view sort of scale down instead. We can also have custom effects, which are these creative effects where we pass in our own sort of rotation on the next and previous slide, opacity, scale, and everything like that. For now though, we're just gonna do a simple fade effect. So I'll just pass in fade true. Um, so we can remove all of this and I'll change the speed back to 400 milliseconds. And let's preview how that looks. So the images just fade over each other. We need this background slider to only be movable by moving the other sliders though. So I'll remove keyboard true and I'll add in allow touch move false so you can't drag on this. Then we can set up our next slider. So I'll just copy this and we're gonna target this swiper with a combo is slider thumbs. So we'll just add this combo in here and we'll give both our sliders names. So this will be background swiper and this one can be thumbs swiper. We'll change the speed to 600. We'll remove the effects and we'll set loop to true. We'll also pass in slide to click slide true. So that way we can click on a slide to move to that position. Each slide is the width of this parent swiper here. So we only have one slide in view and the rest are just hanging off the edge. With those settings saved, we can drag on this slider. We can also click on a slide to go to it, and it's also loopable, so this is a copy of our first slide. It doesn't know how many copies it needs to make to fill up this empty space. Since we only have one slide set per view, it restarts right here. So we can pass in the number of copies we want it to make. In this case, I'm gonna set loop slides to eight, so it's gonna put four slides at the beginning for if we're dragging backwards, and four slides at the end of the list and for dragging forwards. And with that saved, we can drag backwards or we can drag forwards and we shouldn't see the end of the list. We can set up our last slider now. So I'll copy this over and this is going to be our text swiper. So we'll target this swiper we have in Webflow with a combo class of is slider titles. So 
we'll just target this combo class here. We're going to do slides per view auto since our slides are auto width. Each title is a different width. The speed can be the same, the loop can be the same. Technically, we probably only need two loop slides, but when we have one slider controlling another, they need to share the same number of slides. So we'll leave these numbers matching. We can leave slide to click slides true, and let's just preview what that looks like. So this slider should be draggable now, and we can let it snap into place, and it's auto width. This will be our main slider, so we'll allow the user to control it by scrolling, by using their keyboard, and we'll also set centered slides true so that the text is in the middle uh, whenever the slider gets applied. Our headings here have an outline and a transparent font color. We're gonna change their font color to white when, so they fill in whenever the slide's active. So whenever our swiper slide has a combo of is active, we're gonna grab the heading inside it and set the font color to white. So we'll make sure our slides are adding a combo class of is active whenever they're in the center position. And just like that, we have the centered slide here. We can scroll left and right, up and down. We can also use our arrow keys and that's working well. We also want our slide to be controllable with arrows. So we'll target the class of swiper next and swiper prev inside our main slider gallery component. So I'll just add those classes onto these arrows here so that way they can control our main slider. And now we can also click the arrows to move our slider. So our text swiper is our main slider here that all the controls are affecting. And we want to link that to our thumb slider. So whenever we move the text swiper, the thumbs one moves also. So we can grab our text swiper and do controller.control and we can set it to control our thumbs swiper like so. And if we save that and we refresh here, now when we drag on our text swiper, it's moving the thumb slider in real time. Any control that was linked to our text swiper is now also moving the thumb slider. But if we move the thumb slider, it's not moving the text swiper. So to fix that, we can copy this line of code and we can set our thumb swiper here to basically control the text swiper. And if we save that, now when we control our thumb slider, it also moves the text swiper and these both affect each other perfectly. Now we also need to link up our background swiper. And if we set our text swiper to control the background swiper like so, then it'll no longer control the thumb slider. Whichever one we put last is the one it's gonna control. So here text swiper is moving the background image, but it's not moving these thumbs. So we'll remove that. Swiper has one more option for a slider controlling another slider. And we'll add this inside our text swiper settings and it's thumbs and we pass in a swiper name, in this case, our background swiper. So every time our text swiper moves, it's gonna update the background swiper to match. Since the user can't directly control our background swiper, we don't have to do anything to link the background swiper to the text swiper. So now we can drag freely on these sliders. Whenever we release, the background image gets updated with our active class like so, and these are all linked up and good to go. We also want this number here to get updated whenever our slider changes. So if we head over to Swiper API and click on the events tab, we can run some events when certain things happen to our slider. And this is a full list of events. So we could run something whenever the user double clicks on it, maybe while they're dragging on it, we get a progress number from zero to one. There's all different event types we have here like slide change. So that's the one we're gonna use here. You just put the event name right in here. We're gonna use slide change on the text swiper, uh, and this will work even if the user drags on it or uses their arrow keys. However, that slide changes will run some custom code every time slide changes. Now we get, need to get the number of the active slide whenever the slide changes. So for that, we have methods and properties. So these methods are all different things we can find out about our slider. So we could get the active index, the number of that active slide, now this doesn't work when we're in loop mode because Swiper adds some extra slides to the beginning of the list. So it offsets the index and breaks it. Um, but we have another option called real index and that is right here. So this works even when we're in loop mode, it'll just give us the number of the active slide. So I'll just copy that and we'll console log, uh, let's say text swiper and we'll get the real index of that swiper. So you notice the second slide gets an index of one. The first one here should get an index of zero. So it counts from zero to one to two and it goes all the way up. We'll go ahead and copy the class name of this text, head back over to our event, 
We'll basically target that with jQuery and we'll update the text content of it. So we need to set up a variable. We'll set this to let slide number be equal to, we'll say text swiper dot real index. So we can remove that. This number is going to start with zero. So we'll add one to this every time to offset it by one. Since we're getting the real index of the swiper that's already changing, we can just pass an E here for event. And that way it just gets the real index directly from the slider that's changing. Then we can just take this variable and use it to update our text. So here we change, it changes to two. On the first slide, it changes to one. And that number just keeps updating every time we change. We do wanna add a zero in front of our number if the number is less than 10. And we wanna reuse that code for our total number of slides also. So I'll just create a function above our each component that we can reuse. So we pass in any number to the function if the number is less than 10, it adds the zero in front of it and returns the number for us. Else it just returns the number with no zero. So we can use this function down here whenever we create our number. So we'll just pass in real index plus one and it's gonna check if it needs to add a zero in front of it for us and that's good to go. We also need to get the total number of slides and we need to do this before Swiper creates the looped version of all these slides. So we'll target our Swiper slide with the class of is slider thumbs and we'll do that at the top of our each loop here. So while we're looping through it, we'll create a variable called total slides to find the slides in this component. So it'll be this component and we'll find sort of the swiper slide class. And there's a couple of them. So we'll target only the one with is slider thumbs and we'll do dot length to tell us how many slides are there inside of this. Then we can copy the class of our slider number total and we'll basically target that element. And we can go ahead and update the text of it to basically be our total number of slides like so. So if we save that and we refresh our page here, that changes to six because there's six slides total. This one gets the floating zero in front of it. We just need to do the same thing with our total number of slides. So we'll copy this function here and we'll take this out of here and we'll just pass in the total number of slides to this number with zero function. And then it'll add a zero in front of it if that total number is less than 10. Now we just need to make this responsive. So I have this bottom wrapper set to flex and allow wrapping. So it'll just wrap when there's not enough space for all the content. What we're gonna do here on tablet though, is we'll select the buttons and we'll switch them to auto width. And then we'll select the thumbs component and we'll switch that to 100% width. So it'll be forced to wrap. And now flex is just distributing the buttons and the numbers that looks nice there and then we may just want to switch it to three slides here since the slides are the width of our entire swiper we can just increase the width of this and we don't have to add any extra breakpoints inside swiper settings so we'll do 100 divided by three it's one slide per view and that makes it uh, three columns here and that's scaling all the way down and looking great so we have this slider that we can control multiple ways by clicking on the slide, using our arrow keys, by scrolling left and right, up and down. It's also fully responsive on all of our breakpoints. And that really wraps up how to build this slider in Webflow.